What's Gucci guys? So today we're gonna be making a tier list of the most arrogant Enneagram subtypes. And now don't get sweaty, you know. I've made the most manipulative list and a bunch of people came up to me saying, oh, I'm an ILI and I, sorry, cosplayers, came to me and say, I'm an ILI and I'm a very great master manipulator. I read 48 laws of power and I should be at, at the top of the tier list. Huh. First of all, you're cosplaying. Second of all, once you're done cosplaying, then we can have a hard, hard conversation. Before that, not at all. First, we need to define arrogant, so then we can know how to kind of rank this, right? So we will be using specific definition. Having an exaggerated sense of self-importance or abilities. So S tier, this tier is where you genuinely believe you float beyond other mortal humans, right? You are not even mortal. And in your life, you have been called an arrogant prick throughout, right? That's just how it is. Like, that's that's a common theme you've heard. He, you're arrogant. You're arrogant. Something you've heard so many times. Maybe sometimes you coped and you said, no, I'm not that arrogant. I'm actually quite down to earth. But that's the reality. You belong in the East here. You are delusional. So, SO2, being at the top of the food chain. Mainly if you read some of the trade structure, it becomes clear that this type genuinely believes that their only conquest is themselves. They are their life's conquest. They often do believe that they're, you know, almost like the center of the universe. So their very inflated sense of self where they believe they're above other people. They're elevated above others. And when they're unhealthy, they're extremely egocentric and severe narcissism, narcissistic personality disorder with SO2 when, when they're unhealthy. So that's that's the potential God complex, literally. That's what you need to know, God complex. So SO2 is at the top, and then I would put SX2. So obviously SX2 is going to be extremely high because it has pride and overall narcissism boosted with the SX instinct. After that, I would put SX8. Now, the reason why I would put SX8 is because one of the traits we often see whenever you read anything related to SX8 in Naranjo books, is a specific trait called omnipotence. And this omnipotence is basically having a delusional sense of self-belief, coupled with almost, as an example in the books, was a, was a therapist who did not think about the, the thoughts of failure, the thoughts of risk, didn't even cross his mind. So it's a person who has delusional self-belief in their abilities and what they can achieve, almost you know, confusing what they can do with what, what is actually doable. So SX8 deserves the spot there. Top three. After that, I would say SX1 also <clears throat> deserves to be up there because one core generally is, is very kind of inflated in that way, right? They believe they can correct you. They can do whatever they want to do to you. They have the arrogance. I mean, I uploaded a short uh, recently of an SP8 and SX8. That's a great display. SX8s are arrogant pricks. Let's just say how it is. So, 100%. Anyone who believes they have the power to reform you, reform society, like reform you to kind of be up to standard, however they want, and be condescending during all of it, that's an arrogant individual. Say how it is. After that, I'll also put SO1. Think Ben Shapiro. Arrogant prick, ain't he? So, of course he is. Uh, you know, facts don't care about your feelings. He's arrogant, right? Let's just uh, say how it is. Again, very rigid individual who believes others should behave a certain way. They expect that kind of behavior of others. And they will look down on others if, if it's not met. So, S tier, easy peasy. SO3. So, SO3, generally speaking, probably most people, most laymen would say, oh, SO3 should be at the top. And I understand why they think that, because 3 is like super arrogant plus SO3, but it's it's a close call. Basically, all of those types are up there, you know? Wants to achieve greatness, wants to achieve a competency type, a competency type that wants to feel capable and spends their time overworking and, and achieving in order to kind of uh, counter uh, the feelings of lack of worth, which makes them create an image of self-inflation. But that image has to be maintained by, again, achieving and f f kind of fitting the external measures of success. So in my opinion, it's still an arrogant prick, uh, like Andrew Tate, right? So that's a good example of a very arrogant individual. SO3 arrogance is different from SX8 or any other 8 arrogance. 
a, a, a three core arrogance is more like oh i'm better than you and comparing yourself to others that's very three core when you when you argue with someone and they start comparing you on to them and how much they can do and, and what they did in their life and how you're not doing anything with your life their achievements their cars their flexing that's a very much an image core orientation that doesn't exist with an eight core an eight core is not arrogant because he has better cars or because he's so hardworking. They really ain't. In fact, most eights are degenerate thugs who don't even have the self-discipline to be as organized and as diligent as an SO3. But it's because it's inherent for the eight core, an inherent belief they can do whatever they want without, any, without regard for anyone or anything. And also because to them what matters is not your car, it's not your achievements or your diplomas. To them it's a joke. What matters is how big is your ball sack. Sadly, for the most of the three cores, the ball sack just ain't that big. So, that's why. And after SO3, I would put SO7. Again, guys, sevens are a very narcissistic type. And they often believe they want to embody the image of an ideal being that's elevated above others. S tier, easy peasy, lemonade squeezy. Then we have A tier. You're still an arrogant douche, okay? You're still an arrogant douche. But at least you're not suffering from overabundance of uh, egotism and God complex. So that's one good, right? I would put SP8. Gener at first, I wanted to put all eights in S tier. But changed my mind. Still very dismissive of, the, of other people. They take what they want to take. They exploit others. They really have no care about other people. So other people don't really exist to them generally speaking, unless, you know, they're more healthy. But that's kind of how it is for the type. So there is, and also very thick-skinned, and they often have beliefs of that kind of invincibility to take on any task. Should be A tier easy. Then we have the charlatan, SP7, right after, right? Narcissistic as hell, because 7 core, that's narcissism by Naranjo. High verbal ability, the, uh, the, the thinking process that they can kind of do whatever they want to do with their mind. Basically, I can outsmart anyone, I can outwit anyone. That's the mentality of an SP7. Charlatan narcissist, basically, in a nutshell. A tier, easy peasy. I would put SP2, actually, and now, guys, guys, don't get fooled by SP2s. I know, and most of them are cosplayers. Like, most of them, oh, how many NFJ? And, uh, I really love helping people, but I don't have expectations. That's not an SP2. Those are cosplayers. Those are SO9s. Don't even listen to those people. The true SP2 is, as the name says, look at that name. What does that name say? What does that name say? Privilege. So that's what you guys need to understand. It is the counter type, which, one, which, why, which is why it is the counter type, which is why it's lower than the SO2 and SX2, but it's still an arrogant douche break. Right? Still arrogant. So don't get that twisty. They still believe their needs have to be met by the other. So that that kind of gives them this weird, I'm a princess, take care of me mindset that has an exaggerated sense of self. There's no doubt about it. So if you're a true SP2, please take this information with grace. And if you're a SP2 cosplayer who says that's not true, you're a cosplayer. Okay, we don't care about cosplayers. Because this, uh, this this channel is not a cosplay dress-up party. Then I would put SX6. Now again, AT was a bit difficult for me. Because all of those types, it's hard to rank them like that, right? SPA, SP7, it's difficult. I could see some people were making kind of arguments for SX6 being more narcissistic than SP2. But either way, SX6 is very narcissistic type. They believe their way is the way. They believe in excessive certainty to combat their uncertainty by becoming an absolutist individual, right? Who enforces their views. That's very uh, SX6. Also, one of the traits that they have is megalomania. So they're very narcissistic and tyrannical when they're not healthy. Um, now, don't get it twisted. Don't get that shit twisted, you know? It's not like megalomania like first will. No, it's copy. It's the 3V copy, but um, it's, still, it's still extremely arrogant, okay? Then we go SO8. I put SO8 there because, you know, wasn't sure what to do with SO8. But the more we learn about SO8, the more we realize, especially nowadays through the uh, and, uh, Naranjo's teachings, is that I'm not one, that's for sure. But 
Also that, yes, they're the least psychopathic 8-core, and they're the mo most likely 8-core uh, that can kind of seem like a good person rather than a troublesome person. Overall, they still are quite narcissistic because 8-core as a whole is a phallic narcissistic type. But as a counter type, let's give them more space there. So again, still a still AT, guys. Still douche. Still a douche. Then I would put SP3. SP3... Shockingly, right? But still a three core. Still vanity. Still can kind of performance. They do pride themselves on being the best. But it's not about showing it, but being. A hidden arrogance in the SP3 is very real. And then I would put SX4. Again, copy, but probably quite arrogant, right? Quite arrogant. There's this mixture of individuality with hate, envy, competitiveness. And you mix all of that up. And you get an individual who is going to be quite arrogant, right? So arrogance, A tier for SX4 makes perfect sense to me. Then let's go to the B tier, which this is where it gets more tolerable, right? You get less annoying to the people around you. SX5, I would put SO5, mainly 5 cause here. No, because both of those types have arrogant in their trace structure. So again, yes, they do believe, right? SX5 do believe does believe that they kind of want to have the special love and special ideal of someone because that's the only thing they deserve that's the mentality right they want that special individual because they're special themselves so of course there's this arrogance of oh i'm part of the mensa club blah 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 um very they can be quite arrogant so5 same thing you know oh i'm the to totem of the knowledge i look at me i'm the figure of knowledge i'm very knowledgeable i can help people with knowledge look at me i'm so i'm one of the best experts that's narcissistic and that's very arrogant then i would put sp1 didn't know what to do with sp1 but thought to myself okay it's the counter type you know and they want to perfect themselves so i don't think they're going to be that arrogant but maybe i'm wrong and if i'm wrong correct me then i would say so6 now so6 Listen, guys, those are the duty-oriented individuals. And have, if you read SO6 by Naranjo, this this type is, 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 is a set type. It's a set type. Um, I'm, I, oh, that's all I can say. It's a very set type. So after B, you have C. And this is where you get you deal with some good people, right? There's sort of the decent people who are not as annoying. You enjoy talking to them without kind of wanting to, you know, blast your brains out. Because that's kind of how it often goes with the higher tier lists. And here I would probably put SX3, you know, still a three core, right? Still wants to kind of be perfect. He wants to fulfill certain external standards. So I think C, at the being at the top of the C, is kind of is fitting for this type, even though SX3s are very submissive, accommodating type that often struggles with their self-esteem, right? SX7, don't know anything about SX7, and nor do I care, but they didn't know where to put them. They don't seem like they really care about anything like that. They just care about spurging. SP9, SO4, and now SO4 is interesting because I was trying, okay, maybe put them in D tier, but no. When SO4 can feel rejected, there is this arrogance that can happen, right? Remember, our SO4s are snowflakes. And by snowflakes, I don't just mean, oh, they cry babies. I mean, there is this, oh, I'm special, oh, I'm individualistic, oh, this, this is in, I'm so broken inside. But that is what gives them this kind of feeling sometimes of rebelling against the world. I'm special. So this arrogance, pretentiousness, this pretentious arrogance can come up with the SO4. It's unfortunate, but that's just something that happens. Who am I even to say that? I'm at the top of the food chain. Doesn't make sense for me to kind of say that. Does it? See, self-awareness is a good thing. And then I would say SP4. There's not much to say about this. I mean, again, uh, I'm not sure if they would deserve to be D tier. I think they still have the four core mentality of individualism, authenticity, and taking pride in that. So probably would be more of the C tier. D tier, which is the ba the most based, SP5s are actually very modest. So the story is funny, right? I was just now I was on a VC. I was on a VC, bunch of people. And there was an SP5 individual, so I asked him, yo, listen, man, like, uh, do you think you deserve to be at the bottom? And he's like, in a very soft-spoken voice, he says, "Fives are very SP5s are very modest, I think it makes sense. So I'm like, oh, shit, you know, you even sound like you're not arrogant, so had to put them at the bottom. No, but honestly, that, it, that actually did happen. But, yeah, they're very modest type. Then we go SO9. 
SP6 and SX9. Nothing to say in the D tier. Those types are very, very humble. They're not arrogant. SP6 especially is very quite grounded type. It's not, oh, I'm better than you, that they don't have exaggerated sense uh, of self-importance. In fact, I think many of those types could kind of, it would be useful for them to be more narcissistic. So if you are in the D tier, be more narcissistic. It's okay, dude. Like, it ain't that deep, you know? Narcissism, listen, you have to think you're based. That's just it. You have to think you're based. Otherwise, who will? Discuss this tier list. If you believe something should be changed, comment down below. It was fun. See you next time.